Next at 6, hear from the heroes who saved two people from a raging fire after their car burst into flames on an East County freeway. Another shooting near Belmont Park leaves an innocent person shot in vehicles with bullet holes in them. The search for the suspects. Three San Diego firefighters share the tragedy of 9-11. Compliance checks on outdoor dining parklets across San Diego. Violations could be up to $100 per day. One week till the recall election, how the campaign trail is going for candidates in the governor. News 8 at 6 starts right now. For the second time in just over a week, someone was hit in a shooting near Belmont Park. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Tonight, police are still searching for the shooters. It happened last night near the bathrooms just south of Belmont Park. We're told the woman who was wounded is a vendor just caught in the crossfire. News 8 Shannon Handy has more on the shooting and the concern shared by people who live and work in the area. Carlo and Marcella not only was that vendor shot, but two vehicles here in the parking lot were left with bullet holes. People in this area say the violence around here has gotten worse and they're scared. We were scared for our lives. I really thought it was it. Kelly Sexton is still shaken up following last night's shooting near Belmont Park. I literally felt them like ricocheting off the truck and it was just undescribable. Kelly and her husband, who sell jewelry on the boardwalk, were resting in the back of her camper when they heard several gunshots. At least one bullet came through her windshield, shattering the driver's side window. Another left glass fragments on the dashboard. It went this way, the trajectory. So like if I was in the front seat, I, I'm sure it would have been a headshot. It was just after 9.30 p.m. According to San Diego police, four guys got into a fight near the bathrooms outside Draft Restaurant. As one of them ran away through the parking lot, he was shot at and reportedly returned fire. Ten casings were found. One of those bullets hit a 61-year-old clothing vendor from behind in the shoulder as she was packing up her car. She was parked right next to Kelly. Cell phone video shows people helping the victim. Kelly, who knows her, jumped out to do the same. When I saw that she was sitting there on the bench, I just grabbed my first aid kit, with rolls of gauze and stuff to keep on hand, and I'm just like trying to wrap her up. The woman was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. This shooting is one of at least three that's happened near Belmont Park in just the past six weeks. On July 23rd, police responded to shots fired, though they did not find a victim. Then on August 28th, three men and a woman were shot. No suspects have been arrested. Luke Fialius, who was having dinner nearby and heard the gunshots during that August incident, says he's worried about the increase in violence. You don't want to be able to bring your kids and, you know, have to worry about stuff like that. You know, it's pretty sad. On the CBSA Facebook page, other people have shared similar concerns. One woman wrote, that's exactly why we never go to that beach. A lot of things have been happening lately. The mayor's office tells you that police patrols will increase in the area. Kelly and her husband say more needs to be done. What's your reaction to all this? Scared. These, these shootings, it's got to stop. No word yet on if any of these recent shootings are related. Of course, if you have any information about last night's incident, you are urged to call San Diego police. Thanks, Shannon. New details tonight about a Navy helicopter crash that killed five crew members during flight operations off our coast last week. The Navy says while trying to land on the USS Abraham Lincoln, the helicopter experienced side to side vibrations. That shaking caused the helicopter's main rotor to hit the flight deck, sending the aircraft overboard, crashing into the ocean. One crew member on board that helicopter was recovered. The remaining five have been declared dead. Recovery operations are ongoing. Border Patrol officials say agents rescued a man from drowning in the ocean near the border last week. This is video released today. This happened Wednesday afternoon when they spotted a swimmer in distress on the Mexican side who was being carried into American waters in a rip current. Agents called for lifeguards but jumped into the surf themselves when it looked like the man was going under and about to drown. The man, who is a Mexican citizen, was pulled ashore and treated by EMS before being returned to Mexico. Public health officials are bracing for another possible COVID-19 surge after a busy Labor Day weekend. TSA officers screened more than 5.3 million passengers over the long Labor Day holiday weekend, despite the CDC warning people who are unvaccinated to stay home. The agency had also asked people who are vaccinated to take precautions and weigh the risks before traveling. The risk of infection, just infection itself or serious infection is so much higher. If there were a lot of people who were unvaccinated that were traveling and they didn't wear masks and they didn't use appropriate social distancing and they weren't washing their hands, 
we could see a lot more disease activity in the coming weeks. Last week, the U.S. averaged more than 150,000 new COVID cases and more than 12,000 new hospital admissions per day. 53% of the country is now fully vaccinated, which leaves just under half unprotected. An elderly couple is now recovering at UC San Diego Medical Center after Good Samaritans pulled them out of their burning car on Interstate 8. One of the Good Samaritans is in the hospital themselves with a burn injury. News 8's Heather Hope has more on the rescuers and an update on the couple's condition. Right, if you see a car on fire on the freeway, do you stop and get out and help or do you pull out your cell phone and try to do what you can? Well, these four men did just that by getting out of their vehicle, risking their own safety to help pull a couple out. It happened so fast, you know, we just reacted immediately. Five East County men jumped into action after seeing a car on fire yesterday just before 4.30 in the westbound lanes of Interstate 8 before the exit for Lake Jennings Park Road. Oh my God, somebody's in there. Witness Marie McCrory shot the cell phone video of the car fire as five men who were on the opposite side of the 8 freeway parked in the median and rushed to help. Ran over there, a couple of guys grabbed the, the wife and the, the other two grabbed the, um, the husband who was driving. The Good Samaritans are all from the East County Transitional Living Center. Uh, we just saw this guy and he's stuck in the seatbelt, so we kind of snatched open the door and unbuckled the seatbelt and my buddy Barry snatched him out of the car. The fifth Good Samaritan, Barry, is in the hospital with a burned arm after helping to pull a couple from their burning Toyota. Even we didn't even realize there was somebody in the passenger seat. That's how much smoke was in the car. But. None are more grateful than son Steve and Mark Williamson that their parents were rescued and now recovering at UCSD Medical Center. Our dad had some burns to his left side. Uh, my mom uh, got out with just uh, abrasions. Ken and Joan Williamson, 92 and 90 years old, were vacationing in San Diego from Phoenix for Labor Day, their sons say, when their car somehow was hit from behind and caught on fire unbeknownst to them. Everyone that saw that video knows that if those people did not pull them out, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. So uh, I, I can't thank them enough. I'm glad they're okay. Yeah, I'm glad God took care of them, you know, and hopefully they do okay. If you ask the Good Samaritans why they did the rescue. That there was a time when, like so many, I would have, we would have kept driving, but because of programs like ECTLC, we're, I'm changing. And in that change now, we're able to not just be selfish individuals, but look out for others. And while these four men are doing okay, the fifth man, Barry, is still in the hospital recovering from burns that he suffered on his arm. So we're wishing Barry all the help and recovery as he's going through this time. Heather Hope, News 8. What heroic efforts. Uh, you know, when there's a car on fire, you never know when the explosion could happen. And those guys risk their lives, and unfortunately, that couple's going to be okay. Good on them. Yeah. And we're just thankful to have people like that out there they making so, a difference. So thankful. Okay, the unrelenting heat, I know we've all felt it, is forcing regulators to issue a statewide flex alert that's going to take effect tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is in early tonight with a look at conditions here. Carlene? And we're talking about that heat. We had it today with daytime highs that were into the 90s across the valleys. A coastal eddy did not help bring those temperatures down. We even had a little bit more of a warm up at the coast. 81 degrees was the high today for downtown. So we do have a heat advisory that has been issued. This is for the inland valleys. It's going to start on Thursday, but it's already in place for the mountains. We're talking daytime highs into the upper 80s, also into the 90s as well, and that's going to stick around all the way until Friday. So we are looking at a hot week, and more details on that coming up. Marcella. All right, Carlene, thanks. Now, just a week out from the recall election, candidates and the governor are making their final push on the campaign trail. A new study shows if the election were held today, 58% of voters would keep Governor Newsom in office. News 8's Abby Alford has the latest from the campaign trail and the governor's last minute support from Capitol Hill. Within the next week, President Biden is expected to travel to California to campaign with Governor Newsom to defeat the recall. Meanwhile, Newsom's opponents are working full time touring the state. The morning started with a women's march group in Solana Beach for Governor Newsom. We want to urge all Californians to vote no on the recall. 46 candidates are on the ballot to take Governor Newsom's job. 24 Republicans, including San Diego businessman John Cox, who kicked off his Fix California tour bus in Modesto today. What really matters to the voters of this state is having a house that they can afford, having homelessness cleaned up, having enough electricity, having enough water to farm, to make a living. 
Meanwhile, GOP frontrunner, conservative talk radio host Larry Elder was in Clovis wow. today, surrounded by store owners, talking about how the mask mandates have hurt their businesses. And so when I become governor, to the extent that there's still mandates for state workers to be tested once a week and to wear face masks at work, I'm going to repeal those before I have my first cup of coffee. We don't have a safe state. Later in the day on Zoom, former San Diego mayor Republican candidate Kevin Faulkner was joined by Mark Kloss, the father of 12-year-old Polly Kloss, who was kidnapped, raped, and murdered in 1993 by Richard Dennis, who's now on death row. Kloss, who's a registered Democrat, has been an outspoken critic of the governor since 2019 when Newsom supported a moratorium on executing death row inmates in the early release of certain felons. They are mass shooters. They are spree killers. They are cop killers. They're serial killers. They're psychopaths and sadists who rape, torture, and murder their victims, including little girls. We cannot release violent criminals. We just can't. To continue the On Wednesday, Vice President Harris is expected to join the governor's campaign trail in Northern California. Today, he was in San Francisco, surrounded by Latino and union supporters. But it's not just about getting out the vote. It's about turning in the ballot. Remember, you can track your ballot. I did, and I received a text message when the post office received my ballot, and also another one when the registrar of voters got mine and counted it. To learn more about Where's My Ballot, go to CBS8.com, click on the Help button.